This is Robert Gardner, host of Fantasy Wizards. Thank you for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Hi, everybody. This is Baxter Colburn from Public House Media. From all of us here at PHM, we'd like to thank you for your support and wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'm the Greg. And I am Dave Show. We host the Greg and Dave Show on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out our show, The Greg and Dave Show, where we talk about strange, bizarre, and sometimes just downright quirky news stories that you may not have heard about. A new show comes out every Wednesday. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes. And hey, thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. This is perfect. And then watch this. This is super fun. Oops. It's too full. But on the bottom of it, it says Public House Media. So, welcome to Hashtag No Filter Fridays with me. Oh, Jerry, stop it. I have a pug sweater on because it's an ugly sweater party tonight. And my pug wants to be on my sweater. What, Jerry? Stop it. It was so rotten. So, I'm sick, so tea spilling isn't really just for spilling, it's more so for my nose, and I missed last week's show because I was in India, and as it turns out, as much as I wanted to broadcast from there, their um, internet connection is not good enough to, for me to live stream from my phone. I could barely upload to Instagram. So I was like, I think we're going to have to sit this one out until stronger internet is available. So I am back. A little bit worse for wear, but I'm here. And I was really wondering about what I wanted to do the show on this week. And I thought about it and I thought about it and I didn't really have any specific target that I was like really ready to go after. And then... Yesterday, I found an article on Hollywood Reporter that someone had posted about um, yet another sexual misconduct allegation, and it was for Carter Osterhaus, who is a HGTV host, who's kind of like a young mom viewer, and also a friend of mine. I've known him for a couple years now, and I see his wife, Amy Smart, all over the place at parties and things like that. And I was, like, so shocked when I saw it. I was like, oh, my gosh, no, not harder. And then I read the article, and I'm kind of surprised that Hollywood Reporter put it out because (sighs) there was some holes in it. And I'm not just saying that because I know the man, but there was some actual holes in it. So after Hollywood Reporter put it out, it got picked up by USA Today and, like, other national news outlets. Which, you know, the man works in reality television, so I guess any, you know, any coverage is good. But what what had happened was, is that his makeup artist from like 10 plus years ago um, on a show called Carter Han, Carter Can, which was a, um, like a home rebuild remodeling show. Because that's, like, his, you know, his area of expertise is, like, home improvement. Um, He also has a charity that he builds playgrounds on, things like that. That's his his situation. Um, So she was apparently, this woman was his makeup artist 10 plus years ago. She's been out of the business for quite some time. And her story was, is while they were, while she was doing his makeup, 
for a few seasons of the show consecutively back to back, he coerced her into oral sex in the neighborhood of 15 times. And she alleges that um, he kind of didn't necessarily hold her job over her head, but was like, hey, um, you know, if you want to if you want to do my appearances outside the show, when I do press, when I do events, you know, maybe you can do that. So I guess she took that as a, um, offer, however it is that she took it. Um, to my knowledge, this was before him and Amy got married. And, um, because him and Amy got married only a couple years ago. And right now they have, they have a baby now. She's not even a year old. So when I first saw it, I was like, oh my goodness, not Carter now. And then I was like, well, you know, what about if, you know, if it was before Amy, if it was in his, you know, wilder youth, uh, what, what would that be like? And I was like, I don't know, maybe I'll keep reading. Because he doesn't strike me as that kind of a guy. And I've known him for years. And I kept reading, and then it talks about, so, you know, supposedly this happened to her, and then she told two female producers. She told two female producers what was happening, and then they asked, Hollywood Reporter went to those female producers and asked them for comment. And they said, well, we didn't do anything about it because she made it sound like it was consensual. So they just kind of let it go. And then the real kicker was is she was on doing makeup for the show for X amount of seasons. It seems like as his personal, maybe she was doing show makeup for the whole show. It didn't really specify, but it made it seem like she was his personal. And then there was, you know, they had a hiatus. And then for the next season, they decided that they weren't going to have her back. And they switched to a different makeup artist, which happens all the time. Like, crew changes. I mean, sometimes when people are show creators, they don't end up on their shows anymore. It just depends on the situation. And then after that, she says that she got out of the business because she couldn't handle the sexual pressure and X, Y, and Z. She said that she kind of talked to her mom about it. Apparently her mom was in the business as well, but not currently. And she said that she didn't really want to tell her mom the whole story because... Her mom was also in the industry at one time, and she felt like she had a burden to look out for herself more and not be a victim because she was second generation. A lot of people that are second, third, fourth, whatever, lifetime generation of industry people, they feel like they have this, like, you know, family business to uphold, which, as all things, some that applies to people and some people it doesn't. So HGTV has denied any knowledge or any wrongdoing as most networks do and then Carter himself released a statement saying that you know I would never coerce anybody it was completely mutual um, between her and I and she was also with another guy on the crew which was kind of the big kicker for me and I don't really know how relevant that is like I don't know if if you're making a statement about things if you should be um telling people's business like that. But at the same time, if somebody's saying things about you publicly that happened supposedly 10 years ago, I could see how you'd be a little bit salty about it. But it's a mess. And the reason why I did it, I wanted to do this particular story tonight was not only because he's my friend and that's kind of the point of the show is like giving my personal take on the things that are happening, but also talking about things, you know, about how it affects the industry and like not all of this, you know, not all of these allegations are going to be, you know, cut and dry. Yes or no. Who knows? They're, you know, they're on, on, they're on every end of the spectrum, which is really, really hard for us to sort through not only legally, but, uh, you know, internally at networks or studios or whatever, um, internally at agencies, internally at management firms, internally 
you know, at whatever business is working on. And then just, you know, between us as, you know, industry people that are working on the same things all the time. So it is hard to say how, I mean, I feel like he did a pretty good job and HGTV did a pretty good job of like trying to get past it, but, or clear the air or acknowledge the situation and maybe move on. But how do you move on from stuff like that? Especially when you work in a, a really, really squeaky clean area of the business that's like Pinterest and DIY and home improvement. Like that stuff's pretty, um, I don't want to say untouchable, but definitely not like working in some of the, the darker, deeper bits of the business. And the production company that makes most of Carter's shows, High Noon, I've worked with them on several occasions, and they've always been super cool. So I feel like if anything really did happen, it, especially considering she said that she you know, expressed her whatever feelings she had at the time to two female producers, I feel like at least somebody would have said something, because honestly, like, no one should be worried about doing sexual favors to keep their job, but... A non-union makeup job is not worth, it's not worth that. It's really not. A union makeup job isn't worth that. A non-union makeup job certainly isn't worth that. Like, there's plenty of those to go around. There's really no reason in the world why anyone should feel like that's, you know, a condition of their employment. <laughs> under any circumstances and it's just it's just ugly it's just ugly this whole thing is just ugly and I don't I don't like it and I'm not really sure how we're going to sort all of this out but talking about it is definitely the first step but I'm kind of surprised that she got any news coverage at all she says that she doesn't work in the business anymore that she's left and she can't emotionally handle you know the sexually charged business which is fine whatever people come and go out of this town out of this business all day every day new people pull in other people leave that's just a revolving door around here some people are permanent fixtures and some people aren't but as a fellow michigander and somebody who's actually friends of mine it's a little bit shocking like when i saw that scroll up on my feed i was like this can't be. And then I read it and I was like, uh, definitely worth consideration. And I wasn't totally sure if I wanted to do, like, this is the first show that I've done on someone who not only that I know, but I consider like a friend. I don't, you know, I know Brett Ratner, like in passing, we're not buddies. We don't play racquetball on Thursdays. So I didn't feel bad. And it was such a big story, you know, unpacking that backpack or talking about, you know, how to keep your kids out of a situation. So this is the first time that I'm really like, I've been, this is the first story that's come out. That's really like close. I guess it's like the closest to my situation. Cause like I know Louis CK from the comedy club. We're not, again, we're not friends. We're not playing racquetball on Thursdays, but I do know female comics that have been on tour with him. And I do know what he does because of them. And they've all told me on separate occasions. So kind of ways out, but this is the first time I've seen a story come out. That was somebody that I'm actually friends with and I'm friends with his wife. So kind of awkward. And that's something that we're dealing with as a town. It's like these stories keep coming out and coming out and coming out and coming out and coming out. Every day there's a new one. Every week there's a blow up. You know, every time you turn around, someone's getting fired. Someone's, you know, networks are sending in investigation teams or changing their corporate harassment policies and training and what have you. And now just the sentiment between us, you know, going out around town and it's about to be award show season. Like, it's about to be the SAG Awards and the Grammys and the Golden Globes and the Oscars and 
Independent Spirit Awards and the BAFTAs. <laughs> like, you name, I don't, the, you know, the Writers Guild Award. Everybody has an award show between January, February. Sometimes we go late and head into March. Not often, but it happens. So the next two months are going to be really, really wild without ridiculous sexual allegations. And it's definitely going to play a part of it. So that is my two cents on Carter and HGTV. Hopefully it's not actually true and it was just some misunderstanding. Again, he doesn't strike me as that kind of a guy, but at the same time, we never, we don't know what happens behind closed doors. We just don't, especially when it was, you know, a different time in somebody's life. It sucks is the moral of the story is that it sucks. Oh, my nose is driving me crazy. So happy no filter Friday, y'all. It's kind of a somber one. Most unfortunately, I wish it was, um, I guess none of them are going to be happy occasions, but I wish it wasn't so like personally, (gasps) how terrible. So if you have any questions on this one specifically or any comments about what we should do for next week, because I have, think we might go after an agent next week, might go after an agent and we might have a guest to really unpack that backpack because now that I'm home, I have a 10,000 phone calls to make catch. I've been catching up on what's been happening while I was gone. And then not only what what has been happening, but what's about to happen. And I know a couple of people that are about to get exposed here soon. So once those stories break, we're going to have a really, really good time with guests and having everybody talk about it. So if you enjoy this, if you enjoy hashtag no filter Fridays, then share and comment. Or, you know, if you have a question that's not really something that you want to air publicly, send it to me in my DMs. That's what actually, that's actually what DMs are for. It's for stuff like that. So send them to me. And thanks for joining me for hashtag no filter Friday on public house media. See you later guys.